dry and dehydrated skin are not the same thing. Too often I see people using these terms interchangeably and therefore picking and using the wrong products. So today, let's break down that confusion and help you better understand the subtle differences between the two and hopefully help you find the right product for your skin. Hi, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist in Minneapolis and welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel here, I love to talk about all things skin and skincare related. So what is the difference between dry and dehydrated skin? In short, a dry skin is more of a skin type that often one will have throughout their lifetime and has to do with a defect in the lipid content of your skin. Dry skin is often associated with conditions like atopic dermatitis and eczema. And we know that there are actually certain genetic defects in making that lipid by their content that we have identified that people have dry skin have and Often that is one of the risk factors or reasons why they are more prone to atopic dermatitis. Now, obviously dry skin, because of that defective skin barrier, they're more likely to become dehydrated. So then what is dehydrated skin? Dehydrated skin is more of a temporary status that your skin is going through. Any skin type can experience dehydrated skin. Dehydrated skin mostly speaks to the amount of water content that is present in your scratum corneum. Now, because it's temporary, you can have oily skin and become dehydrated. You can have normal combination skin and become dehydrated and definitely you can have dry skin and you're more likely to become dehydrated. Dehydration often speaks to the amount of water content and there are certain molecules in the top layer of our skin like for example most importantly natural moisturizing factors and humectants that are present in our skin, the top layer of skin that are responsible for retaining that water content and reasons why your skin may be Come temporarily dehydrated would be due to, for example, excessive cleansing, using the wrong harsh cleansers, dry environments, stress, using the wrong skincare products, etc. And how do you differentiate between dry versus dehydrated skin? There is an overlap and you can often see similar findings, but in general, dry skin is, like I said, mentioned earlier, is something that you kind of live with throughout your life, but often is more scaly flaky and because of that defective skin barrier you tend to more prone to becoming inflamed so redness and itching. With dehydrated skin the skin often feels tight and taut with more accentuation of fine lines and wrinkles which is why those with oily skin you can still look very shiny and oily but your skin can feel tight. That is because your stratum corneum is really lacking water in the top layer of the skin. So then when it comes to using or picking your skincare products in particular moisturizers you really need to focus on the right ingredients formulated for your skin type. So for dry skin, we want to choose moisturizers that have higher amounts of occlusives to really seal in that moisture and prevent transepidermal water loss because of the lack of lipid content in the skin. Humectants are also going to be important because you're going to help to draw water to the skin. So often with dry skin individuals, I find that a thicker cream based moisturizer works a little bit better in helping to soothe and repair dry skin. Contrasting that to dehydrated skin, you really need to look for water based ingredients to just to help to draw water to the skin. There's less of a concern for transepidermal water loss. It's more about just adding water back to your skin. So here, humectants are really going to be your best friend, right? So hyaluronic acid, glycerin, urea, things that's going to just draw water to the skin. And in these situations, especially if you're oily and combination skin, you may want to look for a gel cream cream moisturizers or oil-free moisturizers that's going to sit better with your skin, not feel heavy or greasy, but still help to draw water to the top layer of your skin to help hydrate your stratum corneum. So then when it comes to picking out products, and today I'm mostly going to focus on facial moisturizers for dry skin. Like I said earlier, I gravitates towards like uh, heavier moisturizers. So some of my favorite ingredients for dry skin includes in the occlusives category, petrolatum, dimethicone or silicone based ingredients, shea butter, fatty acids, ceramides, niacinamides. These are all great ingredients to help repair the skin barrier and increase lipid production in the skin. In addition, humectants, emollients like hyaluronic acid, glycerin, all those things are really going to be helpful. But you really want to look for ingredients that are going to contain some of the thicker 
uh, occlusive to really seal in that water. Some of my favorite facial moisturizers for dry skin includes, and I've talked about this over and again, is La Roche-Posay's Lipricar AP Balm. This has shea butter, so you're great occlusive there, glycerin, a great humectin, as well as niacinamide that's going to all help to repair your skin barrier and help to draw water to the skin. Of course, it is a thicker cream, like I said, which is what I love for dry skin individuals. And I also suffer from dry skin myself as well. Now, this moisturizer comes in a large bottle with a pump dispenser. I talk about this as a great facial moisturizer, but really it's intended to use it all over the body and it's non-comedogenic, so less likely to clog your pores. And this is a great one-stop shop for those individuals who are seeking a moisturizer that's multitasking to be used on face and body. I find this to be especially helpful for my eczema prone patients and I switch to this moisturizer in the winter time because it's very soothing and hydrating as well as moisturizing. Another facial moisturizer that I really recommend a little bit on the heavier side for dry skin is the CeraVe Renewing Night Moisturizer. I've talked about this as well in my past videos. It contains shea butter so great occlusion of ceramides, niacinamide, all really helpful ingredients, along with peptides and hyaluronic acid, which can really help to plump the skin, hydrate the skin. I find this to be really helpful for my mature skin patients who are looking for something heavier and thicker and also helping to fight some of the signs of photo aging. Another one that I really recommend is the Skin Fix Triple Lipid Peptide Cream. And this contains, again, shea butter, a lot of plant-derived oils that are gonna work as emollients and occlusives to, to prevent water loss, as well as soften the skin, along with aloe and other plant extracts to help soothe the skin. It's just another great thicker formulation that is very moisturizing and very soothing. And so another one that I highly recommend meant to use as a facial moisturizer. Now, when it comes to dehydrated skin, I recommend going with a gel cream formulation because usually in those formulations, there's a higher amount of water content and less occlusive. So that way it's not gonna feel heavy and, and greasy on your skin, which is usually what you're looking for when you have oily and dehydrated skin. A few of my favorite gel cream moisturizers includes the one from Neutrogena, their Hydro Boost water gel. It is just very lightweight, fast absorbing, contains a blend of hyaluronic acid that you know is going to help to hydrate your skin but not feel heavy or greasy. This one does contain fragrance and so if you are sensitive to fragrances, I recommend checking out the one for extra dry skin. It is slightly heavier. But it's still a gel cream formulation but nevertheless absorbs very fast and doesn't look greasy and that one is fragrance free. Another one that I have been absolutely loving this summer is the one from Verse. Two moisturizing gel cream and it's just a really nice lightweight gel cream that's fragrance free it absorbs really quickly is great under sunscreen contains a blend of hyaluronic acid aloe and green tea which also acts as humectants to help hydrate the stratum corneum so it's just a really affordable good one that i recommend you guys checking out lastly one that i think is worth the splurge and because it just feels very nice and luxurious on your skin and it has a nice light scent to it is the one from tatcha the water cream and this has a blend of their proprietary fermented extracts that includes yeast green tea rice and algae and all of these things help to act as humectants to draw water to the skin and also help to brighten the skin and over time improve your texture and tone. And so this is another great one that you can use twice a day and still sits very nicely on your skin to use under uh, your sunscreen during the day. Now, if gel cream formulation is not your thing, then I will link below a few oil-free lightweight moisturizers that I recommend for you to try out. So another gel cream that I have been really enjoying lately that I've been using is from April Skin, and it's their Artemisia Squalene Hydro Gel Cream. April Skin is a Korean beauty brand, and one of the main ingredients in their skincare line is using a plant called mugwort, which is a pretty popular ingredient in K-beauty and it's found in various different continents in the world but very has a long history of use in Asia for medicinal purposes and the skin has been found to have soothing and calming and anti-inflammatory properties and it's commonly used in Asia to help with conditions like eczema. So this is a gel cream moisturizer and this line is completely vegan and cruelty free. So it has 3% squalane which is a great emollient to help 
helps hydrate and soften the skin. It also contains 80% mugwort extract. It's formulated at a pH that's very balanced and similar to the pH of our skin, around 5.5. And for me, I just really like it because it's lightweight, it doesn't feel heavy, but yet it's very moisturizing and it's also fragrance free. So it's not going to be irritating. I've been using this every morning underneath my sunscreen and I've really been loving it. Now besides moisturizers, additional products you can add to your skincare routine to help hydrate your skin and it's great for dry and dehydrated skin are hyaluronic acid or hydrating serums. One of my favorite hyaluronic acid serum is the one from Vichy, their Mineral 89, which is one of their most popular products. It's just a great all-around amazing product. There's actually quite a bit of clinical studies behind Vichy Mineral 89. Their volcanic water has been shown to have antioxidant as well as anti-inflammatory properties and has been shown in large-scale clinical studies to really help to soothe sensitive skin, calm sensitive skin like in those individuals with rosacea, but also very helpful in repairing the skin barrier and can even be used after procedures like chemical peels, lasers, and microneedling. I just love it because it's very hydrating and it's very simple. It's slightly sticky like most hyaluronic acid serums and so it's something that I don't use all year round especially in the summertime when it's humid out but in the winter it is one of my go-to products. Similarly another one that I really like is from La Roche-Posay. Their B5 hydrating serum that contains vitamin B5 as well as extracts from centella which are great ingredients in addition to hyaluronic acid which are all great ingredients to soothe hydrate the skin and that one is slightly more sticky than the mineral 89 and it does have fragrance but nevertheless it's something that i really enjoy and do use and have no problems tolerating lastly another hydrating serum that's not of hyaluronic acid origin is the one from inky list their polyglutamic acid so polyglutamic acid as the name um, applies is lots of glutamic acid which is an amino acid string together and it's a very large molecule but it's great at attracting water so it works wonderfully as a humectant and it's even five times more powerful than hyaluronic acid but regardless it's just another great ingredient that can help draw water to your stratum corneum and the inculus has a polyglutamic acid serum that i really like it does also contain rice bran and oats which i think is what gives that slightly unique scent or odor but it's not irritating and doesn't feel as sticky as the roche posay b5 serum if you know what i'm talking about i think it's great to use twice daily and a routine for me, regardless of what, what, what serum I'm using, is I tend to use a hydrating serum more in the winter time. In the summertime, I tend to avoid hydrating serums just because, especially when it's hot and humid out, it tends to feel more sticky on the skin. I feel like my moisturizers and sunscreen don't really sit well and absorb as well. So hydrating serums, especially humectant heavy ones, I do tend to skip in the summertime. I just go for a water gel based moisturizer and i have to find that a well formulated one is enough for my skin that it will keep my skin hydrated and help to repair my skin barrier so that's kind of what i like to do for my dry and an often dehydrated skin. So those are some of my favorite moisturizers for dry and dehydrated skin. My take home message to you guys is that yes, dry skin and dehydrated skin are very similar and dry skin of course is more likely to become dehydrated but so will oily and combination and normal skin. The most important thing is to pick the right products formulated for your skin type. All skin needs a moisturizer including oily skin. And also keep in mind that our skin is dynamic it changes with our environment and with the season so it's highly recommended to change your moisturizer depending on the season even individuals with dry skin you may want to use a lighter gel cream formulation for the summer and conversely for those with oily skin you may find that a more thicker cream formulation may work better for your skin in the winter Hopefully you found this video helpful in understanding the differences between dry and dehydrated skin. Having the understanding can be really important when it comes to selecting the right skincare products. But remember guys, at the end of the day, skincare is a very personal thing. So despite what anybody says, use products that work well for you and you like enough that you will want to use, right? And so if any of these products I mentioned you've tried, comment below. I would love to hear what you think. Conversely, if you have a product that I haven't mentioned and you really love, let me know below as well. I would love to try them myself. As always, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on social media as well and I will see you guys next time. Take care.